2018. Well, uh, Dr. Lal Patlas is on our radar now. The company's Q2 margins came in at a multi-quarter high, aided by price hikes and a better product mix. Their non-COVID revenues have surged, while the profits have witnessed a 47% jump year on year. Om Manchanda, who is the managing director of Dr. Lal Pat Labs, joins us now. Mr. Manchanda, good morning. You know, their margins have recovered to almost 30% in this quarter, and that's a multi-quarter high. Uh, I want to, of course, understand the, the demand trends and the overall business as well, which you very nicely explain to us every time. But first, just some nuances, right? On margins, how much was aided by price hikes this time around? And uh, what is the expectation over the next uh, two quarters, that is, in the second half of the fiscal? Uh, good morning. Uh, I think this is a question I've been asking since yesterday. Uh, there are multiple reasons uh, that have led to this uh, margin expansion. Of course, as you rightly mentioned, price increase is one of them. Uh, but I think the most important is also the mix. Uh, during quarter two, as you know, it's a fever season. It's a very high flu season. Uh, usually our mix of tests actually swings towards a routine test where gross margin is generally higher. Uh, we've also had... Uh, operating leverage benefit because nearly 600 crore of top line, uh, which is the highest quarter generally in, in any year, uh, that has also led to this uh, this expansion. So we are very clear this is not a representative number for the year. Obviously, uh, second half of the year, usually our margins are lower. So these margins definitely will taper down as we go along. All right. So the range, uh, doctor, will be around uh, that 24 to 26% that you have been talking about in the past? Not really. I think the, those 24 definitely was at a time when we were uh, facing a lot of headwinds on, on price competition, which is definitely much lower now. I would definitely say that it should revolve around 26-odd uh, uh, percent or so. 26 percent. Okay. All right. What about price increases? You had taken one earlier this year. Any more price increases you managed to push through? Uh, uh, you know, I've been continuously saying that as a for us, the price increase is the last resort as a management team. We definitely uh, want to make sure that our footprint goes wider and deeper, and we want to increase our customer base. As you look at our numbers, I think over the last four quarters, we've been seeing a steady rise in both value and volume. Uh, uh, as a team, we would want to now focus more on volume growth. Uh, let's see what really happens, but I think I want to see a volume growth inching up a little more. Uh, then only we'll think of price increases. Mm. So, uh, could you uh, guide us on volume growth, sir, uh, for this year and the next year? Do you have any numbers in mind? What could we expect? So, our uh, three to four year CAGR, if I analyze, has been nearly about eight odd percent, and I think we're slightly below that number. I think the first step for me would be to reach that number of eight percent CAGR. And then whatever extra growth that we get, that will be on account of uh, mixed change and first fit contribution and price increase. So I think I definitely would want to inch towards 8-9% volume growth. And swast fit is about 21% now, sir, of the mix? Yeah, we are seeing some stability in terms of contribution. I think for the last three to four quarters, the contribution has stabilized now around 21-22%. Uh, I think that's a number where probably it will stabilize going forward as well. Okay, that's on Swastfit. Got it. I wanted to understand a little bit about how competition is panning out in the industry. Uh, the last we heard is that, you know, from some of your peers like Thyrocare, etc., is that um, discounting has reduced a bit. Uh, but we also, you, you know, we also understand that uh, places like FarmEasy, Tata 1MG have taken price hikes as well. So just give us a sense of where we are in terms of competition. Has it softened compared to what it was last year? And what do you expect as the big trend going ahead? So, so my comment on that essentially is that competition intensity in this business has always been there. It's only that organized competitors have come much more in the last three to four years. Uh, those that number still is there, right? You have competition from hospital space, you have competition from pharma companies. I think that will continue. I think the positive news in the industry today is that it's not a price-led competition. Now, I think the focus is shifted to value-driven competition, uh, which is that people are now focusing on uh, operational excellence, people are focusing on quality, people are focusing on... I think that's a positive news for the industry. To my mind, I think this deep discounting, which was... A, way of life maybe a year, a year from now, I think that's gone away. So to that extent, I think you're right that intensity is much lower. Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Manjanda, you know, historically you've grown in double digits. Uh, for this year, what kind of revenue growth are you looking at? Since, you know, from a stock market perspective, we have to look at the financials. 
and also on suburban, there is some concern on the margin front. So let's throw some light on that as well. Uh, I think if you analyze the entire industry growth itself, the numbers that are in public domain, uh, uh, growth rates for the last two, three years have been a bit softer if you take away the COVID component. Uh, but there are trends where the growth rate is definitely moving upwards. So we are still, industry is yet to come back to the pre-COVID numbers, uh, which used to be in mid-teens. Uh, as far as uh, suburban is concerned, I think we have repeatedly mentioned that our focus is driving top line and we are investing more behind, uh, uh, sort of investing behind growth. So at this stage, a uh, couple of percentage margin up and down uh, is not a cause of concern. In any case, this asset definitely was at a lower margin than, than the parent company. Uh, but for us, suburban asset is really to drive growth in Western markets. That's the way we are looking at it. Okay. Just want to understand on the growth aspect, on the revenue growth front, uh, you said that the industry is yet to come back uh, to those growth levels. But for your company, sir, what kind of uh, uh, revenue growth number will you be targeting, give and take everything, the focus on volumes rather than on pricing? And you're looking at it in expanding your reach as well. So what can the revenue growth look like, say, for FI24 and FI25? Last time, we actually had mentioned that our endeavor is to go for double-digit mm -hmm. growth, which I think is fairly confident, given the way quarter has gone by. We've grown by 12.6% in Q2. And uh, I think on that exit rate, I'm very confident of first, uh, second half also in that similar range. So I think we should just be touching uh, uh, low teens number as exit for FI24 is concerned. <clears throat> okay, and maybe a little better in uh, 25, right? With uh, yes, you get the 8% volume. It depends then, because, uh, yeah. yeah, it depends because Q2 is, uh, though it's, it's, it's very high, but also there's a season impact. I just want to know, uh, I want to see next couple of months how it goes. Uh, that's why I'm a bit cautious. That's a very important thing uh, you said earlier, which is that competition is there, but it's not based on price cuts anymore. Quality. It's based on, uh, you said quality, right? So, uh, yeah, so I think everybody is focused on now on uh, ultimately quality is the, the mainstay in yeah. this business. And that puts you in a good place, uh, you'd say, or uh, that basically means that, you know, it's it's gotten to a stage where you'll also have to sort of, you know, in a way, uh, reposition your brand and, uh, and, and get out there, uh, you know, spend more on uh, sort of advertising, uh, perhaps invest more in the business itself operationally. You think uh, that's the road ahead? Yeah, I think it's at a, at a, at a broad level uh, percentage spend on diagnostic as the overall healthcare cost is very, very low. I, I don't think anybody would compromise on the trust trust part of it. Uh, I think it's, it's the price elasticity on diagnostics, to my mind, is not that really high. Uh, so people will continue to focus on uh, quality and I think they will prefer the brand they trust. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manchanda, I want to understand in terms of m and and acquisitions, right? You have almost 800 crores on your books now. Anything that you have identified, any geographies that you're looking at and anything that you can conclude in the next one year? Uh, there is nothing uh, on the table that I can share uh, with you, but definitely it is part of our stated strategy of widening our footprint through inorganic uh, means. Uh, Suburban was part of that uh, strategy. Uh, I think as of now, if you look at contribution from various regions, South is definitely weaker. Uh, we would prefer to look at something in South of India if possible. So nothing in the next one year? Uh, nothing. You you know these MA things take a lot of time. So right but now it's nothing. Okay, Doctor. Thanks so much uh, for stopping by and filling us in with those details. Wishing you and your team all the best. We normally talk to you about financials, but you're running a good business out there and all of us are dependent on that as well. So wish you and the team. All the best. Thank you.